Hey everyone, little voice crack there. What is up? It's Monday again. Here we are again. I feel like I was just with you guys just a minute ago, but it wasn't. <laughs> Monday Maker was a whole week ago. Can you believe that? I don't know about you, but I feel like the more time I spend at home without actually leaving, time is just like flying by. I don't know, the days have started to kind of run together and it's all just kind of going by really quickly, which I guess could probably be considered a good thing, right? How is everyone? There's Jane and Kimmy and Stacia, everybody coming on in. Hey, Julie, it's so good to see everybody. What's up, guys? I love Mondays. I don't, <laughs> hold on a minute. I don't really love Mondays. I don't, I definitely don't love Monday mornings, but I love Monday evenings that I get to hang out with you guys. It's so much fun. And today's project is a good one. I'm so excited to show this to you guys. This is gonna be a fun one. This is an easy project that everybody can do. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And it has like some, there's like some deeper, deeper level loving going on with this project today. So, you may have noticed if you saw the teaser or if you happened to see um, the little, well, I guess that was the teaser that was over or posted in the secret stash group. Um, so we are doing a little mix of a design elements mix and a design elements seed bead mix. And these are so cool. I love these. So Sarah gave me the task. I love it when she's like, okay, here's what I've got. I want you to like, you know, execute. I love it when that is the way that our situation works between us. Um, so she had asked me about bead mixes this morning and I picked up silver lining. This is just a card. <laughs> The bead mix is not on there. It's in a bowl. You'll see it in just a second. But I picked this one up. I, I pick this one up all the time. And part of the reason that I picked this up is because of the name that is on it. And of course, as you can guess, the beads are silver. And I'm going to show them to you in just a few minutes. Hey, Katie. Hi, everybody. Diana. What's up, guys? Hi, hi, hi. So I pick this one up all the time because it reminds me once upon a time when I still wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my life <laughs> and check the clock that might change <laughs> in a few minutes. I mean, it, you know, I was always one of those very free spirited people who I did a little bit of this for a little while and I did a little bit of that for a little while. You know, I just had my hands in a whole lot of things. And when blogging was a big thing, remember when blogging hits hit the scene, I had a blog and it was called Living in the Silver Lining and I really just kind of used it as a, um, a journal more than anything um, and <laughs> thankfully it is long gone by now. Nobody can go back and look at it anymore but that's really kind of like the way that I have always lived my life because I've, you know, I'm just like everybody else. We go through bumpy things, right? Bad things happen to us. That's part of living. And I'm one of those people who is, I'm a glass half full kind of person. I always have been. So I've always looked for the silver lining in every situation. And the older I get, the more I feel that way about life. Like when I was younger, my very early 20s, I thought I was looking for the silver lining, but I didn't really truly understand that, you know, till I got a little bit older. And I definitely, definitely understand it now, most definitely in the times that we are going through. I am always living in the silver lining, looking for the bright, the good, the lesson. That's like the biggest one for me. I'm always looking for the lesson because no matter how bad a situation is, I've always been in the mindset that what can I learn? What am I learning from this, right? There's always a lesson. And if you ever get to a point in your life where you're no longer learning, you kind of need to step back and reevaluate, right? There's always an opportunity for growth and for learning. So anyway, that's why I always pick this bead mix up. And today we have the opportunity to use it, which then led us into another conversation because right now with things as they are, it is very important that we look for the silver lining in things, right? And why not throw in a little sunshine rainbow with it? That's the seed beads that we're gonna be using. So we've got the silver lining going on. We're looking for the good and we're throwing in these pops of beautiful color 
seed beads to make that silver lining even brighter, which I just found very, very profound this morning. Monday mornings, right? <laughs> I'm always, I'm always looking for those, you know, <laughs> I'm like constantly a, um, I'm like a walking, um, you know, those posters with the cat hanging from the tree and it says, hang in there. That's me, right? I'm always like that. So, um, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy this project, right? But I hope that it also gives you a little bit of food for thought. And one of the things that came up, Sarah and I were talking about this commercial and I promise we'll get right to the project, but I did want to like throw this in there because I feel like months have gone by like my husband's hair has grown like six inches that's kind of like how I'm measuring time now <laughs> that's how long my husband's hair is and <laughs> so I know that we're all at home some of us are still at home and we're getting really kind of fatigued things are opening up but there are still all these rules and all of these restrictions and there's this commercial that comes by that I see and every time I see it it just makes my heart feel so warm it is it's actually a Facebook Oddly enough, it's a Facebook book commercial, and it's this woman that was born during the Spanish flu. Have you guys seen it? She was born a hundred years ago. She's a hundred this this year. I don't. I'm not real sure about the age, but she she was born during the Spanish flu, and she's just talking about how her mom went through that with her as a baby and how they made it right. And she can look back at that and see that everybody made it through that and we're all gonna make it through this. That's that's what her message was. And I just, I don't know, there's something about that that I feel like everybody needs to see that just to kind of remind ourselves that this too shall pass, right? We're gonna get through this, we will prevail. This eventually will be in our rear view mirror. But until we get there, we've still got each other. We've got silver linings, we've got rainbows, and <laughs> we've got good beads, good deals. Check out the weekly deals. I know I've been talking a lot. Let's make some some pretty jewelry. <laughs> all right, all right. I know, I run some people off with my mouth. I'm so sorry. I just, sometimes I get on a kick and I just can't stop myself. All right, so let me adjust the lights just a tiny, tiny bit, you guys. So what I want you to see first and foremost is this beautiful silver lining bead mix. This one is so pretty and there are, there are a lot of things in this mix that I find absolutely beautiful. There are a couple of beads missing because I've already used some of them. But one of my favorite things to find in these mixes are the little bubble beads. I love these. And this one has all of those beautiful gray, kind of silver gray, almost smoky colored, so pretty. I love that. I think that is so, so pretty. And then these big, beautiful glass beads with the facets, and they really, really sparkle very beautifully. They're not sparkling so pretty under this light, but trust me, they are really pretty. And then how sweet, the little heart with the angel wings, which I think fits this, this mix very, very well, right? Oh, thank you. I'm glad I'm inspiring and not just like, <laughs> you talk too much, get out of here, you know? All of the beads in this are beautiful. There are pops of gray, pops of silver. There's almost a blue that is happening here. And I think that that in itself is very profound, right? Depends on how you look at a gray. Is the gray on the blue side? Is the gray on the smoky side? You know what I'm saying? Like that, that blue shining through, that's good stuff, guys. There's this disco ball bead. That's really cool. I like this. I like the finish that's on this. This is really super cool. So it has a matte finish on the bottom and the top, but then it has the mirror finish right through the middle, which I think is awesome. And then of course you can't go wrong with cage beads. They rock. So there's a lot in here that is absolutely beautiful. The boho beads, can't leave those out because those are always a showstopper, right? And a crowd pleaser, loving those. So, so good. So this is the mix, right? But we're gonna give it a pop of color because silver, I mean, it's not that it's not beautiful because it absolutely is, but we wanna cheer this mix up just a little bit, right? And we are gonna use one of the Design Elements seed bead mixes. So we're using Sunshine Rainbow, and you can see I was not very kind to the packaging here, which is odd for me because I normally am very careful about opening my beads, but I had to get in there, I had to get them and get, 
using some of them. So in this little rainbow mix, we've got this beautiful sunny yellow. That is this guy. We've got a really, really beautiful blue. It's it's not quite a sky blue. I don't know what kind of blue you would call that. It was so, so pretty. There's this awesome kind of aqua green color, the white, which represents peace in my mind for this. And then that awesome pop of hot pink. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So I'm going to use all of these and you guys wait for it. I'm going to let them commingle. Can you believe it? <laughs> So we're going to put together a bracelet. This is going to be a fun one. We're going to use our small bell making pliers for this and we're going to be using 18 gauge wire for this. Um, Cornflower blue. That's perfect. Thank you, Maggie Mimi. We, that is the, that's the perfect color. That's the perfect name for that color. Cornflower blue. Wow. All right. I'm just going to fall all over my words. That's usually a sign that I need to stop talking and get going. Okay, so I do have to bring in the blue mat, you guys, because of the seed beads. We don't want to lose anybody. So what I'm going to do to get started is I'm going to make a little bit of seed bead soup. And I'm not going to use all of my seed beads to do this. I know, right? Tina says she's lost it. They're going to commingle. It's going to get crazy in here. <laughs> No, but seriously, I I have to make I have to make seed bead soup, and sometimes you gotta, right? Sometimes it's it's completely acceptable. <laughs> Other times it makes me want to silently scream. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm just gonna dump some of these out. I will regret this later, but in the meantime, we're gonna make a beautiful bracelet. So it's cool. Yeah, nope, no social distancing with my seed beads, right? They are getting all in each other's personal space. But just look how pretty. I mean, it's like they're meant to be together, right? They just need to be friends. They need to commingle. They have to. Hey, Ramona, what's up? Okay. Mix them together. Yeah, this is, these are the things that my nightmares are made of. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm telling you, they look beautiful all mixed together. So it is completely okay for this that they all commingle. Look at that. You can't tell me that's not sunny and bright and happy. It totally is. Okay, so as far as our bracelet is concerned, let me kind of give you the rundown of what we're going to do. So we're going to take some of the silver beads. Okay, I'm going to use, I love this bead that has the silver and then the gray kind of mixing together. I, I don't know. There's just something about that that I really, really like. So we're going to use those guys. We're going to use these kind of crystal gray that we have going on or silver, I should say, because it's really not gray, right? It's silver. We're going for silver. All right. So we're going to use some 18 gauge wire to make loops on either end of these. And we're going to make that really easy because we're going to use the small bell making pliers. So our loops are always going to be consistent, which is really, really awesome. So we're going to make some links. We're going to link these together. Okay. And then in between the links, we're going to make some of these little guys. So we're just going to make some little beaded beads and we're going to use our seed beads to make some beaded beads. So we're going to use, there's a piece of fuzz that keeps getting caught. We're going to use the 18 gauge wire, just like we're using for these guys, right? We're going to use that space in between where normally a bead would be. And we're going to make a little twisted mix of seed beads. So we're going to use some 18 gauge wire and then we're using 24 gauge wire for the um, the twisted seed bead part. Okay. You, if you don't have 24, you can use whatever you've got on hand, but anything bigger than 20 is definitely not going to fit through your seed beads. So just keep that in mind. Okay. But this project is a really, really flexible. You can, you can really get away with what whatever you've got on hand when it comes to the wire, or you can go hop on over to the Jesse James Speeds website and grab all the wire that you need, right? Okay, so we're gonna put these together and we're gonna link these all together. So we're gonna have these pops of a really beautiful color in between our silver beads. So we're gonna make two 
of the little bead links and then two of the twisted seed bead links and then we're going to put it all together and we're going to add some extra colorful dangles to it and I do want to use this charm so I went ahead and popped a little four millimeter jump ring on this guy I think that it's super cool and it looks really good with this bracelet so that's where we're going now we need to get there okay I'm going to move this up just a little bit because I I really want this white background. <laughs> Let me pull you up a little bit too. So we've got a little bit of everything going on here. Okay, so for the for the starter, let's start with our regular beads. We're only gonna do two of these since I've already got three of them ready to go. Okay, so we're just gonna put together two of these. What you're gonna need is, you are going to need, hold on, gonna need a couple of pieces of 18 gauge wire. I've cut myself about three inches of this. You um, you could probably get, you know, you definitely don't need all of that for this, but I like to have a little bit extra to bend, and I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna use the small bell making pliers, and for the entire bracelet, we're using the smallest portion of the tool. So we're using the smallest mandrel of the two on the small bell making pliers. If you do not have the small bell making pliers, you can use your round nose pliers for this, but my recommendation is that you use the largest portion of the taper, okay? Way back here on the back. And if you want all of your loops to be consistent, then mark it with a permanent marker or just come all the way to the back every single time that you make your loop, okay? Otherwise, this is gonna be the tool to use for this. Okay, so one of the things that I definitely, definitely want is to be sure that I've got a flush cut on my wire, okay? That's really super important because we're gonna turn a loop and I want it to sit really nicely. And so to get it to look really clean, I like to trim off and make sure that I have a very, very flush end. You can see just how sharp that is. So it's not at a point, it's just like a nice, a nice, flush okay so we're gonna take the small bell making pliers and I'm just gonna grab that wire right at the tip and I'm just gonna turn a loop just like that okay so I've got this little backwards P shape now we're gonna come in I know we're talking silver linings and rainbows and all good stuff and then I have to <laughs> I have to throw in this term that is probably just the grossest term ever for jewelry making, but we're going to have to break the neck on this or crack the neck, depending on where you learned, right? It's either break it or crack it. Either way, it just sounds disturbing, and I'm so sorry that I have to say that. But in order to do that, what you do is you put it back on your tool, okay? Let me, let me pull you up just a little bit more, just so you can get a down on the top kind of look at this. Okay, so it's back in the small bell making pliers, right? And to crack the neck, <laughs> all you want to do is just give it a, a little turn, just like that. So now it looks like an eye pin, right? But that little, that very slight movement makes your straight section of wire come down from the center of your loop instead of over to the side like a p-shape okay and for whatever reason i don't know who the first person was that decided that that's what they needed to name that technique but that's what it is i think we need to give it a happier um, name but that's what you need to do and that's going to be what you're going to do with all of your pieces of 18 gauge wire because we're using 18 gauge wire as the base of everything for this design okay so we've created our little eye pin and now we are going to thread on uh, one of our beautiful silver crystal like beads here okay I mean that's that's a seriously pretty bead <laughs> okay so we're just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side we're not gonna do a wrapped loop we're gonna do a simple loop that's why I'm using my bell making pliers because you guys know I don't make the best loops with my um, round nose pliers when it comes to just simple ones um, and so what you want to do is you want to bend this wire just right over the top of the bead because this is 18 gauge wire it's kind of hard to just bend it like this is super sturdy wire but if you can just bend it like that. If you can't, you can always use your pliers to kind of coax it into the shape that you want, okay? But there's no space there. There's no um, wrapping going on, so we don't need any space. 
Okay, so when we go to trim off, you wanna give yourself one half inch of wire. That's how much it's gonna take to create this loop, okay? So give yourself one ha half inch. If you cannot eyeball it, then definitely pull out your ruler and measure it because exactly one half inch is gonna give you the perfect loop on this, at least with the bell making pliers, okay? Again, wanna be sure that I'm using my flush cutter so I get a really nice flush cut on that and then come back in with the bell making pliers using the smallest portion of the tool to roll back and we have two loops that are I hold it with my pliers get my fingers out of the way two perfectly consistent loops okay they're going to be the exact same size on both sides there's no guessing there's no trial and error you just measure and cut which makes things super super easy okay so there's that guy. We're gonna do one more, because we've gotta have enough to make our entire bracelet here. Let me just lay everything out so I can, I can remember which ones. So that one, we've gotta do this guy first. Okay, so we're gonna start out the exact same way. The wire needs to have a nice flush cut. This one does not, it has that kind of angled cut so I'm just gonna trim the very, very tip of that so that I've got a nice flush cut on that. I feel like it's really dark. Okay, I'm gonna take the bell making pliers, grab that wire right at the end, and make that P shape, backwards P shape rather, okay? So you can see before we crack the neck on this or break the neck on it, you can see where if you hold it straight up and down, the straight stick portion of your wire is not coming from the center of your loop. It's on the side, right? We want it to come down from the center. So in order to do that, put it back on the tool, okay? Just give it a slight little bend. Make sure you bend it enough, right? And you may actually open your loop up a little bit. Just go back in, close it back, okay? but you want it to look more like an eye pin than a P shape. Okay, so you're just kind of coaxing it into that shape. Now, we want to thread on our bead. Okay, this time I'll show you how I do it with the pliers instead of trying to bend that wire because the 18 gauge wire, this is some heavy duty wire. I mean, it's not as thick and strong as your 16, but it's, it's still getting pretty sturdy. It's really stiff. So I just like coax it over, right, with my pliers. And I still have a little tiny little bit of space there, but it's not much. Okay, so now we wanna come back in with our cutter tool. We want exactly half inch. I'm gonna eyeball it. I might regret it, <laughs> but I'm gonna eyeball it. Trim that off and then come back in with the small bell making pliers, grab it and roll back towards the bead to create that loop. Okay, so you've got two consistent sized loops. All right, so we did the little bead portion here. I am gonna back this up just a little bit more, you guys. Okay, so we did these guys. Now we're gonna do these guys. And they look difficult, but they're not, I promise. Everybody's gonna be able to achieve this exact same look. You just need to make yourself some bead soup out of your beautiful rainbow seed beads. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with the same concept. I have three, well, you don't need three, but I have cut one and a half inches of 18 gauge wire. That's the exact measurement for this to get this exact same size every single time, you want one and a half inches to start with, okay? We're gonna start the exact same way. We're gonna use the small portion, with that flush cut first. We're gonna use the small bell making pliers to turn a loop on one end, okay? And then same thing, put it back in there and kinda crack the neck on it that is seriously the most terrible thing ever to say, you guys. Somebody come up with a better, <laughs> ready, go. Who can come up with a better a better thing to call that? Because that's just, just wrong. Okay, now I wanna do the same thing on the other side, okay? So I'm going to roll the wire into that P shape, 
okay? And then again, I want to crack the neck on it, which is just this most terrible term ever. You know what? I think that was too big, was it? Looks like I cut that a little off. That wasn't quite the right measurement. Hmm, curious. Hold on a second. Let's grab the ruler here. Because these were all supposed to be one and a half inches. That one was one and a half. And that one was one. Okay, let's try it again. I don't know. I don't know. Some days, especially Mondays, you never know. You never know. All right, so I'm going to take another one. Let's see what happens here. Because it may need, we may need to trim these down a little bit. Recenter the loop. Yes, that's so much better. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we turned the little P shape and now we're going to recenter our loop. Yes, I'm digging that. Much better. Much, much better. Okay, so to recenter the loop, just going to make a little crook in the wire. Okay. <laughs> All right, and now we're going to come down to the other end and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to roll that loop and then we need to ooh, not drag our light across the table with our bracelets. <laughs> and then we need to recenter our loop. Okay, I feel like that one is the right size. It's off by just a smidgen. This one was definitely cut wrong. This is the size I want. Okay, so it is definitely. One, a, one and a half inches is the, is the measurement for this. I don't know, that one was just a rogue. So there's one, and we've got that empty space here. Let's go ahead and, while we have the tools on our mind, let's go ahead and make the second one. Okay, so we've got both of these. They'll be ready to go and just add the beads to them. So again, one and a half inches of the 18 gauge wire, and just turn a loop on one end, okay? You've got your P shape. Now we need to recenter that loop. That rolls nicely off the tongue. <laughs> just like that, okay? It's just a really, really slight motion, but that that is gonna change the entire look of how your beaded links look, whether it is with the seed beads or just the regular beads or however it is that you're using this. That small little motion changes the game right? It really kind of sets your beads on the right path for lining up nicely. So as slight of a motion as it is, it really is important to what, what you're doing with your jewelry making. Okay, so there's the P shape we start with and then we just need to give it a little, little reshaping there. Okay, so now we have these two little guys that kind of look like barbells, right? Those are gonna be the bases. Hi, Camilla from Sweden. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Okay, so now we have our little bases ready and you're gonna need about four inches, that's probably excessive, three inches of 24 gauge wire, okay? And what we are going to do, we are going to take our 24 gauge wire and we are going to anchor this on to one of our bases here. And to do that, <clears throat> you're just going to need to, just like always, when we anchor our wire, you just want to wrap around maybe once or twice. Definitely twice, okay? And... <clears throat> Leave yourself a little bit of a tail. We'll, we'll trim that off, okay? But just make sure you get that 24 gauge wire attached to your 18 gauge wire. Now we're gonna use our 24 gauge wire like a needle and we are going to thread on some of our bead soup, okay? So I'm just going to randomly pick up some seed beads here. And the bead soup really helps to make it random. Um, <laughs> as long as I can keep myself from picking up a pattern, which I have a tendency to do. So the more I look away from it, I feel like the better it's going to be. <clears throat> Excuse me, the voice cracks tonight for some reason. Okay, so we're just going to thread on 
some of our beads and bring those down that's not quite enough so you want to thread on about an inch and a half to two inches worth of seed beads you may need a little extra you may need to move some of them off it's really going to kind of be just trial and error there is no exact count for how many seed beads it takes to make our little spiral. But the good thing about this is that you can add and take away very, very easily. Okay, so <laughs> Ramona says, I wish I had someone like Sarah to watch in the middle of the night. Well, you know, over on the Jesse James Speeds YouTube channel, you can rewatch all of our projects over and over and over again so i can i can be your your nighttime beating buddy how about it <laughs> okay so we've thread on a little bit of seed beads here okay and we're just going to take our 24 gauge wire and our seed beads and you want to make sure that your seed beads are lined up there isn't any spaces if you keep them nice and lined up then they will very very easily spiral for you you see how that happened, right? If there are spaces between them, you're gonna fight with this a little bit more. And we don't quite have enough, right? So I do need to add a few more seed beads, which isn't hard to do, All right? Just pop a few more on there and see how it goes. It's such a scary thought to me that <laughs> You can watch me, right? Over and over and over. All of the <laughs> all of the ridiculous things that I say, you can watch them over and over. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so this time we added more than we need. So I am going to slide some of those off, just drop them back down into our bead soup. And then when you get over to the other side, okay, you're gonna take the tail of your wire and just wrap it around that 18 gauge wire and you've got a little beaded bead, right? We just made a little spiral out of it and it's all about keeping the seed beads tight. If you keep the seed beads tight as you wrap that 24 gauge wire around the 18 gauge wire, it is just going to do the work for you. I mean, really, it's you don't have to do a whole lot of coaxing to get it into that really cool spiral shape. And just a side note, these make really cool earrings too. So pop an ear wire on this and a tassel on the bottom, one of those real pretty Jesse James Speeds tassels, and you've got an awesome earring. Just saying, just saying. I love these little seed bead links. You can use these in necklaces, you can use them in earrings, just like I said. They make a real pretty bracelet, like what we're gonna do with them. So they're really cool ways to show off your seed beads you know if you're not a seed beater but you've got great seed beads if you're not into bead weaving pull out the wire there are no rules it doesn't just because they're seed beads it doesn't mean you have to bead weave with them with them <laughs> had an elmer fudd moment there for just a second all right so there's one let's kind of move everything down a little bit and we'll make another one so you guys can see again right a little practice let's make one more okay so this is our 18 gauge wire base and again I cut myself just a, a short little section of the 24 gauge wire and I'm gonna anchor this onto our little component here just one or two wraps and you know what they don't even have to be pretty wraps which also makes it really cool because they kind of disappear the wraps themselves get kind of crowded out by the seed beads so even if you're not super confident in your wire wraps right you're not gonna see them which is really cool <laughs> oh goodness you guys are they really uh-huh you can't alter you can't alter original warner brothers cartoons my goodness oh well my kids have absolutely no idea who Yosem yosemite sam and elmer fudd is which is really sad but anyway all right so anchored that wire on there and we are going to thread on some seed beads just like we did before just using our our bead soup 
times they are a changing, you guys. I think about my kids and I think about how much, how much TV time I, how much TV time I, I use, uh, like I was always in front of the TV and I'm still that way. I love TV. Well, I love Netflix and stuff now, but before Netflix and all of the streaming services were a thing, I loved TV. Like it's a comfort to me. It's just, it, I just like to have it on. If I don't have music on, then I have to have the TV on. Just, it just makes me, it's just comfort. It's weird. Um, but as a kid, I spent a lot of time in front of the TV and my mom would always fuss at me. Go outside, go do something. Stop watching so much TV. And I think about my kids and I don't think I've ever said that to them. I don't think I've ever said, turn the TV off and go outside. They don't watch TV. They watch things on their phone, but like I said, they don't know Warner Brothers cartoons like that. They don't know Yosemite Sam. They don't know, you know, SpongeBob. That's pretty much all of the cartoons that they know. And they didn't spend a lot of time watching watching that either. They've, they've always watched things on their devices. YouTube. YouTube everything. All right. So we have some seed beads on our 24 gauge wire. We might actually have enough this time, fingers crossed. All right, so part of the reason that we left a tail here is because it helps to hold that tail and that last loop or that, you know, one of the end loop to hold this whole component stationary while you wrap your seed beads around. It really, really makes a difference. It makes it so much easier. So that component is not spinning on you, right? It keeps that from happening. Still get a couple of little bumps in the road there. That's okay. But it really helps to have that tail. Okay, twisting all our little seed beads around. No, that one get to that third wrap around and it wanted to do something funny. Let's straighten the wire back out. No rush there. Okay, holding everything still. There, it did better that time. I don't know, it just had kind of a little, a rogue bead or something there. All right, so I have some extra I'm gonna pop those off and then just take my tail and wrap it around and again you're not even really gonna see it so it doesn't have to be the prettiest wrap in the world you just want to be sure that you get it wrapped right and then down here there are one too many wraps on this so I'm gonna undo one of those wraps and then come in and trim your tails off on both sides and you are good to go. All right, so now we're ready to assemble the bracelet. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could, you could just link these together if you want to, or you can link, um, link each one of the links together with a jump ring. I don't wanna do that. I feel like we do that a lot. So we are very, very carefully going to open up the loop on one end and connect these all together that way. So to open a simple loop that you have already created, you wanna treat this pretty much the same way that you would a jump ring, except that you don't have to use two pairs of pliers to do it, you can do it with just one. But instead of pulling it open, you definitely want to open it with a twist, just like you would a jump ring, okay? So you're just kind of twisting it open and then you want to thread on the loop of the next and then twist it back closed, okay? Just like that. Just be sure that you, you get a nice closed connection on that so that your links don't come apart, okay? Okay, so same thing on the end of this one. I'm gonna take that loop that I created and open it up with that lateral twist, just like we would if it were a jump ring, thread on the loop of the next bead in line and then close it back, okay? 
All right, we're just gonna continue and we're gonna alternate with our rainbow spirals, popping those guys on and then adding our beautiful silver beads in there. Okay. And if you're more comfortable using a jump ring in between them, you definitely can, right? It's all pretty much the same. It's gonna give you the same look. Just remember that if you use jump rings in between, you are going to use less beads because the seed beads, I mean the jump rings are gonna add extra length to your bracelet, okay? All right, keep on going. Got a few more to go and then we're gonna put together some little dangles for this because I love extra movement on my jewelry. I think this is a, a good and f <laughs> a good and fun. Wow, I, I could use better. I have better vocabulary than that. This is a good and fun project. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, if you guys enjoyed this project, let me know. Um, we are going to do another seed bead project on Thursday using some more of these gorgeous seed beads. All right, so there is the length of our bread. That is so pretty. You guys, look how pretty that is. I love it. I love that silver in between. It's just, you know, it's just a real statement, right? The silver lining, the rainbow after the storm, The uh, it just says so many things to me. And I feel like it's so summery and light, right? That's not a heavy, bracelet this is a real lightweight fun piece that you definitely can wear every single day and it looks really really pretty okay so to finish our bracelet off i've got our clasps and a couple of jump rings or a clasp just one some jump rings here and i thought it would be fun there are two different things that you can do here. So I definitely want to add this charm to the end here as some extra movement, but then I thought it would be fun to just like take some of our seed beads and thread them on head pins and then group them together. So I've got three of the colors. We're gonna do two more. And then I did wanna show you something that I did that was just, I'm not gonna add it just because, but an alternate to this, okay? <laughs> I just thought this was kind of fun. In the mix, in the silver linings mix, there is um, there are two white tassels, and I was like, hmm, I can add seed beads to my tassel. So I just took some more 24 gauge wires of my seed beads and just wrapped them around the tassel right where it was already connected just for fun if you wanted to do something like that you could add that to the you know to the dangle portion of your bracelet or like i said you could use those little beaded links check out what that earring would look like how fun would that be that's a super super cute earring so anyway i just thought i'd show that to you because that was just a little i was just playing around okay so i have three of these little head pins with the colors on them. They have 12 beads each, so I need to do one in yellow and I need to do one in pink. So I'm just going to thread on some seed beads. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, there's 12 of the yellow and we need to grab 12 of the pink too. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, so we have 12 seed beads. So now we have one of our little, our little dangle, a little dangle do <laughs> with all of our colors. And I am going to do wrapped loops on these. So and part of the reason is just because I, I really enjoy making a wrap loop with a super thin head pin. I don't know why. I just enjoy it. So <laughs> just going to go with it, right? All right. So I'm grabbing the wire right where it is exiting the last seed bead and I'm going to bend that wire 
just like that. When I take it away, I've got a little bit of space here. I'm gonna come in with the round nose pliers. Take that wire up and over the top barrel of the round nose pliers and then roll the pliers out of the way so I can take the wire over to the other side. And then we are going to do about three wraps between the loop and that top seed bead. Okay, super quick on those. So there's the yellow and let's do the pink too real quick and then we will put all of this together Okay. Bye, Pam. Thanks for coming. Hanging out with us on this Monday. All right. There's that one. There's just something really satisfying about the way these really little head pins that I have, they're really thin. There's just something super satisfying <laughs> about <laughs> making those wrapped loops. I know that's so weird, but I like it. I like it. Okay, so now we want to put all of this together and, <clears throat> excuse me. So the, um, the clasp here already has a jump ring on it gonna go ahead and open that jump ring up this is just where I had made the bracelet previously whoa today but lose it so I'm just gonna open that up and thread that on right there okay so for the rest of the dangles I'm gonna add them to another jump ring and I'm gonna thread them on to this jump ring so they're gonna hang from the same jump ring where my clasp is and part of the reason that I do that instead of putting them down here on the other end is because when I go to put my bracelet on if there is a lot of extra stuff going on where I need to attach my clasp I have a lot of time or a lot of time I have a hard time <laughs> rather attaching the clasp if I have to like, you know, try to move other things out of the way. So anytime I add extra dangles and charms and things, I always add them on the end that has the clasp just so that I don't end up being frustrated later. All right, so I'm gonna open up another jump ring and the charm already has a four millimeter jump ring on it that I added, you guys, you'll have to add your own. It doesn't have one on it when you get it, but just pop a, four millimeter on there and then thread that on. Is there enough room? There was earlier. What's going on here? Well, fiddle. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Thread that on. It took me a minute. Sorry about that. Okay. And Let's see, how do I want to, I'm just, I'm gonna make them separate. So I'm gonna take this six millimeter jump ring and I'm gonna hook it to that six millimeter jump ring that has our clasp on it, okay? And close that back. So there's one of our little dangles. And then I'm going to take another six millimeter jump ring and I'm gonna thread on all of our little seed bead sticks, if you will. This just makes kind of like a little makeshift tassel, right? Just some fun extra movement here. And then I'm also going to thread that on right next to the charm on that same jump ring, just right next to it. Okay. So there's plenty of fun movement, but it's not going to get in the way of trying to connect your bracelet. So when you've got it on, it's gonna hang and be fun and you'll have that extra color. But when you go to put your bracelet on, you don't have to worry. Down here on this other end, the only thing you're gonna have to connect to is just another jump ring. So that makes it much easier. You don't have to fight with your jewelry. I don't like it. If I have to fight with it, then after a few minutes, I just give up and then I don't wear it. So in order to make it wearable, definitely add all your dangle stuff down to the end where your clasp is. You will thank me for that little, little extra tidbit of information. All right. So there it is. That's our finished bracelet, you guys. I think it's really pretty. I think it turned out really, really well. It's super easy to do. It's a great way to show off those awesome rainbow seed beads. You can get every bit of this, the silver lining, 
bead mix and the sunshine rainbow seed bead bead mix over on Jesse James Beads. So everything you need to put together this bracelet. And this can be executed in a lot of different ways, right? Any of the seed beads that are over there on the website, you could mix together and make your own little bead soup out of whatever color combinations that you wanted to and put it together. Super easy. I love using the 18 gauge as the um, as the like the main wire for this piece. I feel like we don't use a whole lot of 18 gauge wire and it's really sturdy and strong. So it, you know, it needs some more love and I feel like we definitely did it justice in this bracelet for sure. All right, turn you guys around and we will say our goodbyes for at least for today, right? You guys, it's just the beginning of the week. How many more times are you going to see me this week? <laughs> All right. So just a quick note for those of you who she loves that I say bead soup. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's what it is. It's bead soup. <laughs> so for those of you who come and hang out with us over on the Dress It Up Buttons Facebook page when we do a weekly project there, this week is no different. We are doing a Facebook Live project. We're doing a Father's Day project for this week. And um, the difference is though that we are moving. We're gonna try out Wednesday. So last week we actually did 1 p.m. on Wednesday and we seemed to have really good response to that time slot. And I feel like we're not really overlapping anybody else. So we're gonna redo that. So I won't be on Dress It Up tomorrow. I will be on Dress It Up on Wednesday at 1 p.m. So set your reminders if you wanna come hang out. We are going to put together a really fun Father's Day project and we're using some of the cutest Dress It Up buttons you have ever seen. I cannot wait. It's going to be awesome. Um, Maggie, no, 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 not tomorrow. It'll be Wednesday. So tomorrow, no Facebook Live for me, but on Wednesday. And then of course, you guys can catch me again here at 11 a.m. on Thursday we will have another fun beady project for you guys and we're gonna be using some more seed beads and a, one of the new bead mixes you guys go check out the website there are new bead mixes there's a ton of new stuff on the um, Jesse James Beads website check out the weekly deals there are three really good deals the deals change every Monday so if you haven't had a chance to check out what this week's deals are I can tell you that one of those deals is a seed bead gift with your cart so if you're interested in grabbing some of these seed beads now is the time to take take yourself shopping right <laughs> all right guys have a wonderful wonderful rest of your monday enjoy your tuesday i'll see a lot of you on wednesday and the rest of you i will see you on thursday have a wonderful rest of the week do something fun for yourself between now and then make some jewelry post it on the secret stash page and if you're interested in the um jewelry pin pal all that information is also available over on Facebook. So check that out and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.